Hey, what's going on, everybody? My name is Mike Toledo. Thanks for joining me on another podcast. Hey, listen, if you are a PDR tech and you watch this video and you want to see me sport some of your gear, send it over to me. 2120 West Mission Road, Suite 240, Escondido 92029. Meanwhile, we have a pretty cool podcast. As usual, we're talking about some new tools, a stretched oil can dent. We're going to talk about the LCA, the leverage control adapter attachment and well with eric Patton because he is the person who created it and again joe uh, from dent evo uh, joe garcia that is the one and only he's not really my guest anymore he's more of a co-host so we're going to take a deep dive into some dealer accounts again the oil can and introduce you to another tool for your slide hammer it is great so stay tuned let's get right into it all right everybody welcome 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 eric Patton. eric Patton is with dent express is that correct up in uh like the northern california area are you near san francisco or where are you at eric I'm right in between San Francisco and Sacramento on 80 there. And how far is that from San Francisco? Like how many miles like or minutes? 45 miles. Oh, About exactly. an hour and a half of traffic though. Yeah. Exa- oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I get <laughs> So, uh, so it looks like you had a pretty cool shop back there, man. Uh, yeah, it, I didn't even know you had a shop, man. Yeah, man. Two years now. How do you like it? How, how is it being a shop owner now, man? Uh, well, I'm still, I love it. Cause I'm here like three to four days a week, but I still get out mobile when my tech Brian can't handle everything. So it's, it's nice to get out once in a while. You know what I mean? Yeah. But I love being here, man. Cause yeah. I got everything I need right here. Yeah. Well, dude, I, that's what I like about it, man. I, I like the freedom of, you know, maybe a, a train wreck comes in, right? I don't yeah. have to get it done like right then and there. I don't have to, you know, exhaust my energy all in one shot. I can, hey, leave it for a couple of days, do a couple of quickies in between and Absolutely. come back even when it gets frustrating. Right. You know, you got you get time to, you know, the, to relax again and, and gather your thoughts and jump back on it. So I oh, one yeah. of the luxuries yeah. of having a shop. Yeah, I love when people drop it off the night before and I can get in here at like six in the morning, get yeah. on it for two hours before the phone rings. You know what I mean? Yeah, 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 that's, that's right. Yeah, yeah you, you have the freedom to come in and out, whatever you want. Uh, you, yeah. you get a wild hair up your butt, you can come back at night. And I've done that, come back at 11 o'clock at night and go, man, hell, I'm just going to get it done, you know, and yeah. so, so I can relax. Peace and quiet. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, Eric, I, I brought you on the show and... Um, you know, you and I have been friends a while. We've been, you, you've, you've had a couple tools that you um, sent over to me before, but I think this one, you really, really knocked it out of the park. And we're talking about the LCA and uh, we're actually, well, well, I'll bring it up here. We're talking about this, this go. tool right here and not yep. the handle, but the, the attachment that goes on the dent dial and, and connects the Gorilla Grip. And it creates huge amount of leverage like I was using on this motorcycle tank right here. Actually, let me yeah. add you right here. I can't even believe I, I did that, dude. So what is your thoughts on this? How did you come up with this, with this, Eric? So flat bars can be uncomfortable on your hand when you're really cranking on them. You know what I mean? Yeah. They're wide. And I think, I think it was you had even mentioned oh, you wish a flat bar. They'd come out with a flat bar handle, right? Yeah. I think it was a long time ago. So... I had my buddy weld an ultra adapter onto uh, just a little plate, actually the plate that the uh, hub sits on, Yeah. but it just wasn't, uh, you couldn't adjust it. It was one direction only. And then I happened to have an extra hub sitting around and I had my buddy, I was like, Hey man, can you weld me like a right angle and then weld this hub on it? He's like, yeah, no problem. So we just kind of Jerry rigged it up in the garage. And that the next day is when I sent you that photo. Yeah, and I kind of let the cat out of the bag a little bit, dude. No, so, not <laughs> you know, I got I got shafted from that all over the place, dude. <laughs> Just a little quick good. photo of it, man. But here's here's here it is. Like here, you've got a nice little attachment right there. You you yeah. you basically, gosh, you made that dent dial like a another tool. You know, dude, like a like a huge. That's, 
Huge yeah. amount. So what does Sal think about it, man? Because you were mentioning a little bit about it, but what's his thoughts on it, dude? So Sal posted about it the day, I think the day after he got it, and he said he loved it. He said that the, it's comfortable, and he said he, he was using it all day. He, uh, he used it on this big smash, but I don't know. He gave me props, gave me kudos. Yeah. So, so some of these people who never had this kind of, you know, uh, a, a flat bar, like, explain how you got this set up here. What, what, what is this right here? So the top, you're, you're, you're uh, putting that up against the wall of the truck bed. Yep. And then you're using the, uh, the tip and right you're here. pulling towards you. Yep. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it, it, well, first of all, you get extra length out of the tool. So you got what? Another 12 inches of length on that tool. Yep. And then it's got nothing but power. That's my favorite tool for bedsides. Yeah, and this so the, I use this particular setup for Tacomas. You know those. Oh yeah. Those super open rear quarter panels, right? Those yep. box trucks. What are you using this on? Uh, an old Ford pickup, ninety three. Yeah, with a super open. Open, right? yeah. There's right? nothing to leverage off of. Yeah, there's nothing to leverage. I remember, I remember back in the day just like, gosh, I remember like tapping where I saw the dent and just trying to see if I can get some of it to move or, yep. or whatnot here. Now, I'm actually five using extensions. it. Dude, I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you now. This, this, this repair is actually going to be on Dent Trainer. Um, it's done. I just got to upload it. And I did a little um, video on like, um, what do you call it? A... Um, Look at the leverage I'm getting right here. I'm just going to play it here. I, I put it on YouTube, just a, a time lapse of it. And, but I'm setting it up, right? I'm getting the right leverage here. I'm talking. Then once I get my leverage here, I am able to just really crank. And we all know that the, yep. these, these gas tanks, these Harley gas tanks, oh. you need a ton of leverage. And there's my leverage right there. I'm, I'm actually not pulling. I'm pulling, but not pushing nearly as I would as hard if I was With using a rod, rod, you know? Yeah. And then we all know how, how it can get really uncomfortable uh, when you are doing these type of repairs and it digs into your hand. This is super yeah. comfortable, man. Boy, you just thinking outside the box there, Eric. <laughs> right on. <laughs> yeah, it, I don't know, man. It just came to me. I was like, oh, this would be perfect. I always wanted something that would rotate, similar to the uh, – uh, Steve has the Ultra, the UDT – whatever what's you know the one that looks like an ice pick yes yeah the big fender tool yeah i was just hoping for something that would rotate all the way yeah yeah and exactly because well you just quickly put it up put it on now are you going to have any attachments that go like that on on other flat bars so yeah i'm in, i'm trying to figure something out right now but the problem is you're gonna have to cut off your uh you know how they're all plastic dipped or uh, they all got the handles? Yeah. So we'll have to cut that off. But I'm thinking of, well, right now you could actually drill and tap your care point bar. Just all you got to do is drill one more hole and it'll fit right in there. Oh, that's right. That's right. Well, what about, let me ask you this. What about a, what about a, um, an attachment for ultras? What about that? Yeah, you could do, do the same thing. Are you, have you talked to Steve at all about that or I, not? I have not. I talked to him a long time ago when I made that first one, but uh -huh. I just couldn't figure out how to use his handles because they, they're actually, so you know the, the Gorilla Grip is, is thin, right? It's yeah. not real. You're talking about around the housing like you're talking. Yeah. Like I got one right here too. So let me see if I can get it focused here. Right. How thin it is. Whereas yeah. the Ultra comes out a little further. Let's see which way. Oh yeah, you know what yeah. I mean. I see what you're saying. So it wouldn't be centered. It wouldn't be centered dead center of the the tool. Yeah. Of a and flat then bar. here is I've got you got you probably got one too as well. But yeah. this is is this one of the latest ones right here? Is it more polished Let me now? See the backside. No, that's the, so that's the first one. I have, I don't even have the new one. <laughs> yep. Yeah, look at we don't even have the new ones, man. <laughs> no, so. I don't have the new one. Here, here's the. Uh, Here's the original one that we did in the garage. Yeah. Check out those welds. <laughs> yeah. Look at that welds, man. <laughs> Let's see if I can get over there. We go. Yeah. Yeah. Check that out. <laughs> so what's this going for? Is this is being sold on Anson, right? Uh, on Anson right. PDR, the website. So right now it's 69, I think 69.99, uh -huh. but it's going to go, I don't know how long they're doing that for, but I know it's a sale. 
dude, I, I tell my students, if you got like anybody who's going to get it, who has a, owns a dent dial, this oh. dude, you, you're missing out, man. This is like changes. Right. It, it just adds, it's almost like adding a two for one. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's yeah, like waking you, this bar up, man. Right. If you have the dent dial and the gorilla grip, I mean, it's a no brainer, honestly. It's comfortable. It's more comfortable than that. The, the, you know, big wide flat bar. I don't know. To me, it's so, a no brainer. So let's, let's, let's picture this for people who are listening and people who are watching. You can, mm-hmm. you can use this for what we just showed, like the truck beds, right? You can right. pull it, right? Yep. So you have your attachment here, right? Quickly jumps on there, right? And you can use it for the front fenders, right get yep. a huge amount of leverage see personally nothing against you sal if you're watching this but this there's almost like you don't need the 30 inch anymore because now you got you got the yeah. you know the lca right but i mean not saying it wasn't but the 22 light or 22 heavy is perfect for for this for this setup man it really is that's that's the one i use the most yeah yeah um Wow, I'm I'm really impressed, Eric. I think this is this is a home run, man. It's you you did a good job. When you sent it to me, I was like, oh yeah, <laughs> it's, it's over like <laughs> Rover, dude. So that's funny. Yeah, it's, everybody I sent it to likes it. So they're yeah. telling me they grab their dent dial more than they ever did. Not and they always use it. They use it a lot anyway. You know what I mean? But yeah. it's just it's a little no, more no, comfortable. No no knock on de- on Sal. Hell oh, no. no. I mean, we we all, we know no. we use it. You know. Um, I've had my dent dial for probably. Seven, excuse me, seven or eight years. I know. I go get a tetanus shot every year, dude. So <laughs> I'm just, I'm just kidding. Just kidding. We're just kidding. I polish it. I polish it up. I, it's due for a polish, man. It's due for a polish. Yeah, mine's and, mine's past due. And FYI, it is just to give you guys a shout out. It is one of the best. And Chow will probably say no. It is the best, but it is one of the best flat bars I've ever used. Um, it is. It is. It is a dynamic flat bar that is a macgyver tool so right. you know the more ideas you could think about using it uh the the better it works and what a great marriage it's like your adapter or attachment marries the dent dial to the gorilla grip right and it's like it's like it's almost like a, a piece that was born for the dent dial and both of right. those you know i agree yeah and I'm, I'm i mean i'm not just saying i'm i'm really happy with how it came out I, I think it's great. I didn't think I was talking to Craig, right? And he was trying to picture what I was saying. And I was like, Hey, Craig, I, I he probably thinks I'm a weird guy. I go, Craig, this is a great, it's a great tool, man. You know, I, I really like it, you know? And, uh, I wasn't sure if he, if, if him and Christina and I talked to Christina too. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm hitting both of them. They, they, Christina might get upset at me because I, it was, it was both of them. I was talking to both of them and, and um, they were silent for a while, so I didn't know if 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 they were gonna you know take it. And I, by all means, you know, I just thought it was a great great uh, accessory, man. And I'm glad it's taken off for you. And I know many people are going to enjoy it and feel the same way once they have it in their hands. Yeah, I hope so. I hope so. I think they will too. But how how's it, how's people responding to it right now? Do you, do you have you you got any feedback on that? So nobody that's bought, well, just Sal and then uh, Corey Kleinfeld, uh-huh. uh, he got one of the prototypes and he, he absolutely loves it. He sent me a couple of photos of him using it. Um, uh, Big Ant loves it. Big Ant? Um, Who's Big Ant? Uh, premium Dent Repair 510. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, but honestly, other than that, I, haven't, I don't know anyone who... Anyone else who has one? Oh, Grom, Daniel Grom loves it. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, if you know Daniel, did he give you, I'm sure he's giving you some, well, if you take it to the bench grinder and you could probably. <laughs> we know, actually did while I was there. I, I bet you he did, dude. <laughs> Let me just uh, loosen it. You know, we can find, take it to the bench grinder, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll do this. But yeah, he's, he's, he's a great guy to get feedback oh, from. Yeah. yeah. He but, gave me some good ideas for other flat bars to add it to other flat bars. So. Yeah, well, it. Yeah. if you can, you know what? If you can come up with 
more attachments like that for other flat bars. I mean, it is going to be a knockout win, which I'm sure you, you, you're doing. You got your, you know, your, your ideas spinning and whatnot. But Eric, this is a, this is a hit, dude. It's a win. Yeah, I'm, Appreciate I'm, it. I'm happy to bring you on the show and, and, and really talk about it. And, you know, it's, it's a great tool. No matter what part of these tools you have, I'm sure if you get, you know, if you already have the Gorilla Grip, like he's saying, and you got the dent dial, I mean, there's just, why even not uh, get the, the attachment here? So we called yeah. it the LCA, right? And what's that stand yeah. for? Leverage Control Adapter. That's right. Yeah. You get some serious control with that. So. Oh, yeah. Well, Eric, I just want to say thanks again, dude, for uh, coming to get it. I mean, coming. Let me the hammer. I can read. I can edit that part. <laughs> <laughs> well, Eric, I just want to say thanks again for coming on. Um, I wish you the best of luck on this on this product here. And uh, where can they find your handle? Give me some handles of where they can find you at. Uh, Den Express PDR on Instagram, and then just Den Express uh, on Facebook. Cool. Good deal. Yep. Eric, stay on for All a right. little bit, but I just want to say thanks. Thanks, everybody, for listening with Eric. Go out there and purchase that product. You won't regret it. Talk to you guys later on that one. Thanks, Mike. All right, what's going on, everybody? We're back with another episode. Mr. Garcia, Joe Dent Evo Garcia is joining me <laughs> again. Hey, welcome, Joe. How you doing? Thank you, Mike. I'm doing well, man. How about yourself? Man, I can't, I can't, uh, I can't complain, man. Well, I can, but it wouldn't help. Let's put it that way. So <laughs> sometimes have, it helps. We always have something to help, something to complain about, right? So you can complain uh, to a friend, brother. <laughs> I'll listen. I know you would too, man. That's the crazy thing, man. <laughs> so I appreciate that, man. Appreciate that. So yeah, we're gonna have a Joe Dent Evil hotline here, dude. So you know. yeah, no kidding, huh? Um, <laughs> hey, what's the difference, dude? That's kind of like my life anyway, right now. Yeah, <laughs> you and me the both. The PDR, man. you and me both. It gets bat, anyway. bat phone. <laughs> yeah, PDR is like uh, like having kids, man. People ask you, hey, does it get any better? And you just say, no, it just gets different. So yeah. you know, <laughs> yep. I can see the parallels. Yeah. So we what our topics are going to be uh, this evening or day if whatever time you guys are listening to this again if you are listening to this and you don't realize that this podcast is actually a video cast uh if you're on itunes or the podcast app you can just click on it make sure you double click on it and you'll see the video pop up and you can watch what we're talking about or you can go to youtube and check that out or go to denttimepdr.com and check out the video from there as well so meanwhile we're going to be talking about dealerships right like how would you engage with them how do you try to keep your accounts notice i said the word try and for trying it can be years okay meaning that you are doing that and you've been having those accounts for years and i am one of those guys but it's still a try i mean you still it's still an effort to make sure that you keep those accounts um going and you know, the pitfalls of them and, and the, the Joe, you can share your story. I can share a couple of my stories. Um, but we have some interesting things to say. Uh, we've, t this has been a topic before, but we kind of just want to get a little bit more detailed. And we do have a funny little, little, uh, little song in here that uh, Joe sent me that Neil, uh, sent Joe. I, I, who is Neil? Everybody wants to know who, who Neil would be. Neil McConnell, the Dent Destroyer, and yeah, Dent the Destroyer. Uh, the the folk singer of of Ireland. <laughs> yeah, this is the, you the, know all the I, Irish guys are funny, man. They are super cool, man. They're, they're either they're super <laughs> relaxed or very high strung. So yeah, there's no more there's no middle ones. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Neil's he, a character, man, and he's, he is. he's actually quite talented, man. He's he's a musician and and. Uh, singer and and songwriter by trade well, and and uh a hell of a dent repair tech well actually so let's set up this let's set up his 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 um uh, shall i say song it's called the uh, dealer suck right or something like that is that what it is uh just we'll call it the dealer song <laughs> the dealer and, and by the way uh there's a story behind it when he wrote it uh I had been bitching and complaining about losing a, 
pretty huge account, which ties in well with this, uh, with this, you know, episode here. But he was, he went and wrote a song for me about it. So we'll, we'll listen to it. Well, and okay, here, let, that you just set it up. Let's just do it, dude. Ready? Here we go. All right. It's just for you, Joe. Well, it's been a hard road learning dance so many years at considerable expense. You don't have no respect for what I do. Well, you want me here and you want me there, but when it comes to my money, you don't care. So I got a little message just for you. Well, f them dealers, you know what you can do. I don't care if you took 80% though what I used to do. You can them too. They me to come back to work for you. F you f***ing dealers, I ain't working here no more. Blurped that out. He actually now, blanked it out. Much more peaceful. That you are not in my face. Yeah, well, I kind of had to. I hope well, he doesn't mind. It was a disgrace. I'm a better man than all of you, and loyalty is my voodoo. So I wrote this video message just for you. Well, f you leaders, <laughs> you know what you can do. Well, I don't care if you eight percent though what I used to do. You and beg me to come back to work for you. You f***ing dealers, I ain't working here no more. You f***ing dealers, I ain't working here no more. One more. You f***ing dealers, I ain't working here no more. Wow, man. What a what a great song, man. Like that was like what a cheery up you song, man. Like <laughs> that's exactly what he was trying to do at that point. He was trying to cheer me up and he he certainly did, man. I'm honored. Uh it was hilarious and and I wish I could share it in in its entirety, but I don't know. You might lose some, some no, listeners. No, I you know what? I appreciate you being, you know, and, and editing that out, but I I think I might have played it. If you guys want to hear the original <laughs> the original we will I will uh put a link to the file. Joe, you'll send me the original file if you don't mind and yeah, I will I can send like it to you. I'll just Dropbox it. You guys can you guys can download and listen <laughs> to it from there. So I, I will put that on my website link. Or actually I'll put it on the iTunes or podcast link and Podbean and all that stuff so you be sh in the youtube so you, if you guys want to listen to its entirety um that's awesome and so uh he's from neil's from ireland right yes what's, what's his yes. handle uh uh you can find him at uh let me dent, let me dent underscore I destroyer it's something, dent destroyer right? yeah. if you look up dent destroyer on instagram but yeah he's got some underscores in there so don't, Let me, you know uh, what, you guys don't. Why Joe? Joe doesn't have to say it. Actually, there will be a link down there too if you guys want to yeah, give him a I follow. Yeah, I sent it to you, so okay. you can you can yeah. put it on there. Yeah, I, it's I'll, Dent I'll Destroyer. Put it uh, Dent underscore Destroyer dot Neil underscore MC underscore Conan C O N N O N. Okay, but you'll link it up. So. so it gives you guys an idea if you want to check it out. Follow him. He's a funny guy, man. He's a super guy. He's actually commented on some of my stuff and actually giving me some crap like they always do. So, um, <laughs> but yeah, that is crazy. So we're going to talk about dealerships too. I just want to make sure we're staying on track. Dealerships, uh, and we're going to talk about stretch dents. Okay, and before we, we're just going to give you a little preview in case you want to hang in here and watch what we're talking about. We're talking about this dent right here in particular. Um, Joe and I are going to kind of, he's going to kind of give me some what he thinks because this thing started the oil can. We'll, we'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, I, I'm By no means, uh, it's not ruined or anything like that. It, it's still pretty good at where it's at right now, but we're going to get into the details. We got a pa action packed within the next 40, 45 minutes right here. And then... Fellas and ladies, and we're going to talk about this new accessory from Cam Auto. All right. It's actually pretty cool. I, I thought it was pretty cool. Joe, you ordered one too. Yeah, so did I. Okay. I already ordered one. Yeah. It's, yeah. Uh, it's pretty awesome. Kind of revolutionary, in my opinion. Yeah. I, I, and that's why you got you to gotta watch this video cast, everybody, if you're listening to us. It's, but, anyways, we're, we're gonna, we get visual as well when we talk about it. So, Joe. Dealerships. 
wholesale accounts, bottom feeders, <laughs> whatever you want to yep. call them. Uh, yep. You know what? And I'm not disrespecting. You know, I'm very thankful for for the accounts I I have. I currently have. And and I don't mean to sound like it's just the, it's the worst thing you can have. It's not. I think it's what our experience, Joe. That and I know you 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 want to chime in on this is, it's our experience that we've had with them over the years. In general, most of them don't treat you with the same respect that you and I would treat someone else on a daily basis. They, let's just put it that way. In a nutshell, that is true. Yeah. And, and just like that song that Neil put is like, you know, you bend over backwards and they don't care, you know, uh, for most, for the most part, but there, there are a good accounts out there the mom and pop places, the ones who, who do like, you know, you as a person, as an individual, uh, you can probably keep that account for as long as you'd like, but the, the main chain people, uh, it's, it, you're just another person on, on the lot. So, yeah, that's that's my take. That's what we've based on our experience. Yeah, I was going to say that's been a lot of our experiences. Uh, just the the dealer animal, it prefers profit over people, even with their own employees. How do you think they're going to treat a, a vendor, an outsider? And so do you, you, you have any any input on how to for those who who want to go and attack that part of the industry, you know, and get that type of, you know, experience, uh, income, whatever, whatever their motivation is, um, you know, do you have any sound advice on, on how to get those accounts or, or, you know, obtain it? Special favors, bribery, uh, <laughs> general ass kissing. <laughs> yeah. Well, you yeah, know, that's, that, that's going to that, go a that, long way. That, that's your framework. Yes. Okay. Well, what Have about you, <laughs> Can you tell I'm, I'm at the end of my wholesale PDR journey, Mike, by my words? <laughs> Please go ahead. Oh, uh, no, honestly, um, I've, I, I really am kind of at the end of the road with, with dealers. I have a, I have like one dealer group that I still service on a regular basis. And these are longtime clients of mine, like you, you mentioned yours. Um, and, you know, my contacts, quite frankly, are, are in the used car department, my main contacts, my friends, basically. And uh, once they're gone, uh, I, you know, I haven't exactly made relationships with anybody above them. You know, I mean, I know the GM, um, but I don't have a, like a friendship with them. I don't have uh, relationships with the with the owners, you know? And, and I think that if I really wanted to pursue wholesale uh, on, a, on a more serious level, I think I would have to figure out a way to, to uh, nurture a relationship with the owners. And I mean, people do it all the time. We know, we both know dent guys who, who have those relationships. They go golfing with the owners and, and, you know, all kinds of stuff. But I just, I don't, I don't invest my time in that kind of stuff because I kind of already see the writing on the wall. In my particular case, I, I feel like um, I have a better chance of, of, of being successful dealing with a, a different market than the wholesale. But I still use their, their, uh, the relationships, you know, to some degree. Yeah, Joe, I think, um, I think you're absolutely right. I mean, uh, for, for us guys who, who see the writing on the wall, like, as you mentioned, it, it's, it, it's, shall I say, uh, we've been there, done that. And there's a certain point. It's not that we, we are not capable of wanting to go get those accounts. I think it's the whole, again, the, the experience that we've had with them consistently. Hey, you walk in, you get your card. Now, this isn't like to discourage you guys from getting accounts, but this is this is the experience that we've have, and I don't think it's changed. You walk in, hey, I'm Mike Toledo with Dent Time. Oh, just leave your card here, or they won't even give you a chance to walk in. Right? I've got five guys behind you. You know, they'll say something. How much you charge? You know, it's everything. But hey, thanks a lot. Nice meeting you. You'll never probably get that. But I think the, the the main reasons 
that you can get an account and, and people still land accounts is, you know, like you said, butt kissing and it's timing too as well. But I, but the, to, I don't know, to, to kind of, I guess, agree with you. I'm the same way. I, I don't get, go out and get new accounts based on what you just said. Yeah. Well, that being said, Mike, you know, I, I kid about, you know, the, the bitterness that, uh, has resulted from my relationships in wholesale, but realistically, I have to take accountability for what I have power over. And I really, uh, I have to look back at those relationships and I have to think, how could I have, have kept that account or how could I have uh, had a better, more of a rapport with the, with the, the real decision makers? Wow. And you know what, yeah. Joe, you, 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 that's a good, interesting thought. Not very many people would probably say, Hey, I'm going to take responsibility of some of that. I do that too, as well. You know, I, I looked back at, at some of the things that, that I've done, Joe, that lost my, I lost accounts, you know, one was not trying, you know, when you get into accounts and you're new, you try no matter what. I mean, I don't care if you think that you don't think it's can be, can be done. I guarantee you more than half the time you try, you'll surprise yourself and you will be able to do things that you thought you weren't capable of doing. And that's generally one of the big criteria for you to keep accounts is to try. They just want to see you try. It's something that, that they want to know, know that, all right, he tried, you know, but if you just say no, well, you, you, it's kind of like getting a little mark on your report card, man. <laughs> you right. I mean? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you're only as good as the last job you did for them. That's right. That's right. right? That's right. I think that, uh, you know, we can talk here. I mean, we can go on and on about this whole thing. And, and whether your listeners want to hear about, like, uh, securing new dealer business, which I'm probably not the guy to talk to, except that I can tell you what not to do or what I wish I had done. Um, well, I think that's what they, we could also talk I, I about. I think that's what they want to know. I mean, I, I, yep. I, of course, that's, okay. the, 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 let's okay. just spill it out. I so, mean, who, who yeah, give, okay. give us the, give us the, give us the all, man. You know? Yeah. Okay. And then we can talk about uh, maintaining uh, wholesale accounts, and and a lot of it has to do with what we were just talking about. Uh, you know, nurturing those relationships and the right relationships and with everybody. And I, that was something I was always really good at as far as like the people on the ground floor, you know, uh, the everyone from the lot porters to on up to, you know, managers. And but like I'll give you an experience that I had with a, a, a very much corporate uh, automotive group, you know, dealership that we were doing, I mean, like 30 or 40 cars a week, which was a lot for, for my partner, Kelly and I, and we had everything mapped out. We had great relationships with the people there. Um, we had, uh, even we had a system down where we categorized the damage where we figured out that over a year's time, every, every month at an average of 81% of the cars that we did were what we considered category one cars, right? This was general PDR. Basically, one to four panels on each car with one to four dents on each panel, okay? Anything beyond that, and, the, and these again, these were like quarter-sized dings, basic stuff. Anything beyond that in size or uh, amount of dings uh, was going to be a, a go into the category two. And those were, uh, I think it was 12% of the cars we did. So Kelly would do all the 81% cars, the, the cat one cars, and he would overlap into the cat two cars to some degree. And then I would take over on the harder category two cars. And then above that, we had an extra, uh, I think it was like 7% that was category three cars, which these were big smashes. This is stuff that would have gone to the body. Good. Uh, that being said, we were dialed in on almost every level, almost. And where I missed the mark was I lost the account to a company, a personnel company, 
who had a relationship up above the, all the management with the, with the corporation, with the corporate owners. Are you saying, These are, you guys say, are, are, you say, are you saying that they brought other people in or they just had like a all in one thing? Uh, both. Okay. They were a personnel company. So they did all the recon. They kept trying to get, they were in there already and they were trying to get the PDR also. But, you know, as you could imagine, they were using, they were pricing everything really low. So they were using uh, low end services all around, including PDR and, and, and the dealership itself, the, the management there, they didn't like the work they were doing years ago. So we, we were doing the work for many years there. So, uh, but they made a deal with the, the corporate, with the corporate side of, of the business where they were going to be bringing in personnel into the business office, uh, and throughout the dealership, everything from, you know, admin assistants to the floor sweepers, lot porters, wow. as long as they could get all of the recon. And, you know, we knew the writing, we saw the writing on the wall when, when my contacts told me about that, to which I offered to have my partner, Kelly, clean the bathrooms <laughs> at the, at the dealership. <laughs> but, you know, that was like a Hail Mary. Pass. No way. I'm kidding. We no didn't way. Do that. I was going to say, but, <laughs> no way. we'll clean the toilets too, man. <laughs> yeah, we'll do anything, you know? <laughs> And that's where you get with these guys, man. You get like desperate. You think that you have no other option. Wow. Wow. I mean, you know, that, and that's, the, I think the biggest thing that happens right now for the accounts is that there's always, it feels like every two years, at least with my accounts, there's the next all in one big company. You know, we'll do everything for this one low price. And it seems like they, right. at least my my two accounts I have left, like or maybe three, they all just about fall for it, you know. And it's almost like a tactic for them too. They'll come in, oh well, Mike, you know, yeah. we had this company over here. What can you do for us, man? Because we might think, you know, we we're thinking it's a little bit of high, you know, it's a little bit high. I'm like, do you realize I I don't even raise my prices barely two percent a year. Right. Come on, guys. And so we have to make sure we talk sense into these guys, too. Listen, guys and ladies, when you have accounts, the best way to, to, to keep your account is know the lingo. I understand you have to talk their language, though. So they, when you can go into a, a price battle with them, you understand their lingo. Um, you know, like for instance, here's an example. So. Do you mind if I, am I going off topic, Joe, on yours? So nope. Okay. No, go ahead. I I, I hear you. Okay, so you go in, you write up like ten cars, and they're like, "Oh man, you got this is too expensive for this car. You want one hundred and ten dollars for this car? I you know that I'm too much into it. You know, I I got too much money into that car. Well, you know, this is for the the guys who don't know. Most of you guys do if you are dealer accounts. Where you go. All right, John. Well, I'll tell you what. I, I understand you might be $110 into that, but how about if I put like how about if I put like $11 on each other car, uh, on every other car? And that way you still get that one car done, but it doesn't show that you put more money in. So it would just add a little bit more on the other cars. Oh, yeah, that, that makes sense. Yeah, sure. That's just an example of the lingo that you have. And you need to know there, there their numbers like how many cars did they sell how many things so you can prepare yourself maybe they're not selling as many cars so maybe you might need to lay back on how many cars you write up even though it's there so you need to kind of like adjust and i'm talking about this is for how to keep your account you know you, you don't go in there and bill for like like you're trying to hit a home run every time you know you don't need to do that um and my other things is, is give them some insurance. So if you write up a car, you fixed it, it's been there for a week or two, and it's got another dent. You never, ever write up another car, that car again if you did it already. You just take care of it. And you let them know that you take care of it. But you never would double bill. That's another strike, if not the number one reason why you get fired real quick, is if you double bill the same car. 
So those are just some of like small things right. that I would say on the top. Yeah, for sure, man. They, they love the word free. They love the word discount. Uh, the, the double bill thing, whenever, if we miss a dent, or or if the dent happened after we fixed the car we will put it on the uh the invoice as a what we call lot damage and no charge and you know like you said you want to remind them that you know you're taking good care of them yeah they have short-term um, memory in hindsight you know since you say it um i think the mistake i have made in in trying to keep wholesale accounts was the same was the thing that I do when I'm trying to market to a, a car owner, which is that I'm the best dent guy there is. You know, they don't necessarily want the best dent guy. It's safe to say the we have to understand the problem that that we're providing the solution for. And in my opinion, with with wholesale, they don't want the best dent guy. They want no. the they want to keep their profit margin. Uh, at a point where it's good for them. And that means that they're okay with settling for mediocrity. And, and I think that's where I had a lot of conflict because I had a hard time, you know, just being a production line guy, you know, and, and, you know, you want to partner up with somebody who, who's okay with that. And with all due respect to my, my partner, Kelly, he's, he, he's a general PDR guy, you know, he, he only wants to do basic stuff and, and that's his comfort zone and he's good at it. He's good at doing it fast and they were happy with the work, you know, and that let a lot of pressure off of me. But even still, I think I was always just too focused on where, you know, you have the, you know, to the, telling the dealership that you have the best dent removal company around and they knew they did, but I think that it's all a matter of, of uh, numbers perceived value. Mm -hmm. And if they're perceiving that they got the guy that's the best, their mentality is that, well, I want, what if I don't need the best? So if I get the guy who's just under the best, how, how much less am I going to be paying and how much is my profit margin going, going to increase? That's the problem. That's the problem that you're serving. Or, or the need that you're serving and the problem you're providing a solution for. And One, that was the mistakes that I made dealing with dealerships. One hundo. And, and good point, Joe, because you, you do. And that's where I say, you, here's the great thing about you, Joe, and techs like, uh, like us abroad. You know, we want to be the best tech we can be, but we get the emotion of that involved in the dealerships right and does it and it's yeah. but you can't help it right because you're a passionate pdr tech but the smartest pdr tech and I'm not saying we weren't smart and you're not smart joe i'm not saying that but if you want to be get smarter you have to understand how to play the game in the in the pdr industry because again as joe mentioned they ain't looking for the best tech right there however it can bite you in the butt what i mean by that for the new techs when you get into this business, it's almost like you're conditioned to do 80% of the work, like 80% of repair. And you think, well, I can get away with that, you know? And then all of a sudden it becomes a habit of you becoming like that. So either you stay in the, it's like, it's like being in the stripping business, man, or being in Vegas, you end up being like them, you know? Um, and, and you can't get out. Because then you're conditioned to, well, well now I got to do dents 100% in the retail market. But again, going back to staying on track to your point, yeah, if you, if you want to survive in that game, you have to understand that where their expectations are compared to yours. And yours are generally higher than theirs. But they're not paying you for those high expectations and at the same time, you, you have to realize to be careful about that because you don't want that to be a conditioned quality uh, that you can turn into. You can be an 80% tech. That, and that's the, that's the good and bad about being in the, in the accounts. And that's why there's such a big difference between wholesale PDR techs and retail PDR techs. Can you do both? Absolutely. If you play the game well enough. 
So that's basically right. my take on that. Yeah. I, I think uh, our mutual friend, Chris Brown from Dent Patrol out in uh, San Fernando Valley. Yeah. Uh, he balances that fine line really well. He does. And, and I, I listen to him talk and I'm like taking notes because I think, man, I should have done this or that, you know, with, with the, that wholesale relationship or whatever. And, you know, we talk about shift when Chris and I will talk a lot about shifting gears and the ability to, you know, knock out 10 used cars and then you go and do a, a retail job and it's two different worlds, man. I mean, talk about a gear shift and it's, it's, you're changing your, your mindset right there. And, and, you know, guys who are successful at that, I think can really, uh, run a very lucrative PDR business. Yeah. I'm actually going to have Chris on in a couple of weeks because I have a, um, cool. I, we did a PDR with dent masters and, um, that's right. I, I went out and did a ride along with him and that's going to be coming out on the new series, but I would like to bring him on, talk about the wholesale accounts and like exactly how you just said it because, and, and I don't think it'd be, I'm not going to say which dealerships he was doing because you know, he, he's going to be on and, and I'm not sure I'm not going to mention any of that uh, unless he wants to, but it's a very interesting, like you said, Joe, I mean, this guy is a, I mean, he is on fire. Him and his tech, like they, they have 30, 40 cars in one lot and they're doing, and they might, they could possibly do 50 to 80 cars in a day. It's just ridiculous. So yeah. Right. Probably the busiest. Yeah. They're, they're machines, man. Yeah. Yeah. Probably the busiest, uh, busiest uh, person I've ever seen, dude. So you know what? My, my yeah. phone is all yeah, messed up. I put this on vibration, and this thing still friggin' like rang. <laughs> so. Anyways, so yeah, man, you're you're a wanted man. Anything else, man. Wanna, <laughs> anything else you want to add to the uh, to the dealership stuff? Like uh, you know, you, that, this you said. I, I would like to touch base on one more time, kind of like getting into the account. I mean. What, what's your strategy besides giving them donuts and, you know, and hey, you know, kissing ass, basically, like you said. Is there anything else? Yeah, well, and in, in, I said that in jest, you know, yeah. about kissing ass. I mean, it's true, it's though. I mean, come on, rapport. Joe, you know it. <laughs> you know, well, look, I've seen guys do it and they were successful at it. And it was something I was never comfortable with myself. And that's why I worked so hard at trying to do great PDR. I'm not saying I'm perfect, but I'm, I'm just saying that I focus more on the craft than I did on nurturing relationships, quite frankly. I've gotten better at it as, I, as I've matured and stuff, but, and, and learned the game, like you said. But, you know, um, it's a really high supply, uh, you know, market. There, there's a, a real high supply of PDR guys that, that are in companies that are willing to to, to play hard, quite frankly. And so I think, you know, going back to like what you're saying about like securing new business, like I, it's not in my future. You know, there's been a few times where I've had to, you know, use some muscle to, to uh, kind of knock on doors that, uh, that were already there, like relationships that, that I've had for years. And, and that's been fruitful, but for your listeners, if they're if they've never done work for dealers, one thing to consider is the very thing that kind of put me out of that big client, that big account that I told you about, um, and that was that personnel company. They're playing a different game, you know, and where they're dealing again with the owners and the corporate uh, side of the business. So they're they're nurturing a relationship with on that level and they're um they're providing other services too so that's an, that's one way in you know um another way to get into dealers if if i had to do it again um i think i would try getting in as just the guy for their new cars for their super pick 
for the super the picky customers? Really I'm sorry, sorry, you cut out. Yeah. You said super picky customers. Am I cutting out? You know no, what? No, you're fine. Dude, I gotta no. apologize. You're I think I think my Wi-Fi is. Uh, no, my for the most for really the most part, Joe, right you're, you're good. We can hear you, dude. So okay, yeah. okay, cool. So you know, um, I have some uh, dealerships that call me, and and I've tried getting into their used car department as far as like their regular service guy, but they only call me for the tough jobs, or for uh, picky customers, or or new cars. You know, like high end of new course. cars, and <laughs> but the price is uh you know uh accordingly you know it's uh basically we we what i do there is i'll price them at price a dent minus 20 percent and and really i'm getting to the point where i'm thinking do i even need to discount any of it because it's it's like you know they they call me when they call me and i've tried nurturing a relationship with them and and i'm not bitter about it it's business you know i i quite frankly prefer to go in there and do it, you know, a smash or whatever and make decent money, even at, you know, with a discount, you know, the discounts to uh, incentivize them to call me again or refer me business, you know, because they let's face it, they do have that ability to provide you with more work down the line. Um, but that's another option for your listeners if they want to get into uh, doing wholesale so and, and eventually basically a, kind a, of whittle down. So basically, be a specialty uh, uh, PDR tech, right? Kind of like a, a specialized yeah. PDR tech, yeah. Yes, that's a good. That's a good avenue. Absolutely. That's thinking outside the box, there, Joe. So, yeah. well, and and then here's my take, and then we'll move on to the next subject here. Okay. My my take is is I don't like. I'm just like you, Joe. I don't. I I, I think I can count how many times I've given donuts or a pizza or whatever, uh, maybe three times. You know. Um, because I want to be appreciated for my service, for my um, spontaneous uh, punctuation, my effort, um, my consistency, and doing my job right. I mean that it's it, that's like the the top ten you can do. I mean you 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 don't practice that. First of all, how do you get in the count? Well, you be consistent. You if you really want to get in the count. You let that manager know, hey, is there anything I can do? I'm just checking in. Hey, I don't. Hey, boss, I don't mean to bother you, but I'm I'm here. And be funny about it. Like like really get in him. You know, have him give you a shot. One day he's gonna give you a shot or her. Yeah. And and then if he if he let you speak to him or or her. Listen, listen, Bob. I'm I'm very anxious. I'm 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 hungry because. I do my job right. I'm punctuation, punctua punctuational. I show up on time. I do quality work, and I even can travel to the to the person's house in a pinch. So, I'm just stopping by. So let me know, and and then I'll be by next week to give you some donuts. What kind of donuts you like? You know what I mean. So, you know, you gotta kind of break the ice, but more importantly, that they they kind of get your personality and they and they kind of go you know that guy's pretty pretty cool you know um so yeah but be yourself don't be a ding dong and don't be somebody you're not but but be funny and be yourself is at the most part because if you're more real to them they'll be more real to you and <coughs> and um that's how you're going to be able to break the ice between what joe says and i say and it's always about timing ladies and gentlemen you're probably going to get 90 percent no's and that, but that one ten percent yes could be the bank for all those ones that said no. You know, yeah. I I think you know that was well said, Mike. And the moral of the story is that we need to understand, no matter where whether we're trying to market to wholesale or body shops or uh, retail business or hail, we need to understand the problem that we're providing a solution for and and what what these needs are that we're serving because when we wrap our head around that i think then it makes sense what what the roadmap is Absolutely. you know then we can decide what what we're going to need to do to get past that so you and i you know we're we kind of you know we're we have some bitterness towards the wholesale accounts and we're Just a half little. saying it jokingly <laughs> but you know there's a way there's a way 
we made a lot. Of, you know, I know you can you can vouch for that. You know, um, but uh, I, I really think that you know if we understand the needs that we're serving, then we can start breaking through barriers, and then those barriers become like an obstacle for our competitors. So if we can figure out, you know, how to get past that barrier, we have to visualize what's on the other side of it, because that other side is the promised land where not many of our competitors uh, understand or, or can see or envision, right? That's true. I mean, honestly, you know, like you say, Joe, you, you said it before on this podcast, but we, our biggest enemy is ourselves. You know, the biggest obstacle is what we create in our own head. And it's a lot of head trash. Um, of course, this podcast wasn't very motivating for you to go get a, an account. I, I don't want it. I don't want you to get, feel discouraged, but if you are going to go get those accounts, be prepared to work for it. I mean, be prepared to, have some some spit game and uh and that go drive personality you can't teach that in a way to a certain point um all you can do is just do your best and believe in yourself I and mean, you can believe in yourself and you heard me say this a lot doing no matter if it's your pdr repairs or if it's your the way you approach dealerships or whatever remember believe in yourself because if you don't nobody else will and that goes for people's services, uh, your business, all that stuff. So um, really get yourself motivated and get behind and, and really show the value that you have. So we're moving to the next topic, Joe. Okay. All right. Sounds good. Next topic is oil can. And so I kind of showed this to you a little bit. You're you're just spitting some suggestions like, oh, wait, wait, hold on a second, man, hold <laughs> on. I, I'm in the middle of, as we speak, this is Wednesday here. Uh, by the time you guys hear or watch this video, you're looking, we are looking at this. All right, this is, this is. Uh, wow, man. The project that I was working on and it's pretty crunched right against that edge of the body line and it does have some paint issues on the corner edge of where the tail lights at so far it has not gotten worse okay now <laughs> that's a good sign here here's the problem okay look at this boink oil canning people are listening it looks really good there. It actually looks worse than it really is. I mean, it's, it looks worse than that. See that pinch right there on the, on the top, Joe? Yeah. You know, right right about there. Yeah. Actually, if I can get this. Right. right there. Right. You know, right here where it bows. That's yes. The, that's the weak point. All right. All right. Right in that area right here. So I tried tighten this up, but I didn't want to knot it up. And yeah. so, and I pulled more, I pushed more metal on the right side. So maybe I can cheat and get some metal coming out, but you know, you, it's, and it's, and it's weird down there too, as well on the bottom. So there's the oil can, but you push down here. So that tells me something right there, Joe. So I'm pushing down, you know, three inches below it, four inches below it. And it pops the dent that's oil canning four inches above it. So that is um what i'm dealing with and this is at the stage i got it currently this is where i left it at this evening okay when i left okay it's it's, it's i would say it's what it's at its cleanup stage right 80 percent, 70 percent, somewhere around there 70 let's just call it 70 percent. Sure. okay so yeah especially considering what what was there before <laughs> so yeah so what's your take on that dude would you mind showing the before once more? Yeah, Mike. Yeah, you want to play it, or do you want me to just uh, just just? You know, talk no, no, about no, it? no. It's good like that. Okay. Because I was trying to picture where the where the deepest part of the dent was and where any of that pressure might be uh, trapped. Um, the area at the top of the tail uh, of the tail lamp, like just before it goes into that point and meets the body line. Right here. Was there a pretty good gap there? Yeah, there's a little between, there was a, between yeah, the edge was, of the tail lamp. Yeah, and there the, was by a quarter inch gap. Yeah, quarter inch gap. Mm -hmm. We can we okay. can play this a little bit. See if I, if it'll pick it up. I don't think I got enough. I didn't go to the other side very well. Okay. But I was just trying to capture the reflection. <clears throat> so yeah, there you can see it's a little. See how the gap is on the bottom. See that gap? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I figured it would. <coughs> Excuse me. 
So, <laughs> you know what I would do if I were you? What's up? I would I would line that I would just uh, it, install that tail lamp back without the the nuts, you know, and just see where everything lines up and see if your edge is still a little bit low. Okay. Perhaps it's holding in some pressure there. Yeah. Um, and if so, then you know you know you got to move that, and that might tighten up that oil can. If that doesn't work, I might look into removing the the bumper the bumper cover yeah that was that was going to be that was going to be probably the thing i was going to do tomorrow because you see this bottom edge where it, where it goes into the bumper that day yeah. okay that's actually giving me a little bit of a hard time i i i fix it and then i work work up here and it comes back a little bit of a dent mm -hmm. you know what i mean and then this yeah. part over here we're over in the top corner the shadow area on the right side that's that's pretty much gone, but there's still a, something going on and uh, below the body line right there. So this dent is yeah. a lot worse than it, of course, right, Joe? It's always worse oh. when you get into it, right? When you throw a light yeah, on it that, and then all of a sudden. That looks like a gnarly one, though, man. I mean, you got a lot going on there. And you got those that kink right, right above the body line. And you got another contour yeah. where it goes into the sail. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's all. Everything you see is true. <laughs> <laughs> there's no uh, fal false advertising on this repair right here so you, you know what I, when i see stuff like this and I, I find myself in a kind of in a bind and like start losing hope a rabbit hole <laughs> I start yeah, losing hope. yeah 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 you start losing hope and stuff and you start feeling like i mean think i mean I, it's nice you got the shop and you can take a refresher dude that's that's, when you're mobile but well, you that, know you were mobile and that's and you're, exactly you know, four, what I'm four hours about. in in the driveway of some somebody's yeah. driveway and you're like oh my god what have i done so um, so it's it's oil canyon so my my option was is like you suggested is take down the bumper cover all right see if i can get it to move like give it a different point of view from looking underneath it um right if that doesn't work i've got the power pr box but i do have a like a brace that goes across a little bit but i still think i can oh really yeah i still think i can i can like get a grinder underneath it so and okay. sand down. is that a uh uh acura honda accord honda accord okay mm -hmm. um before i i'd i mean before you go to the to that extent um what i was gonna say about like when i find myself in a bind like that um i try and find the hidden advantage like what's the hidden advantage here and to me, what I see is that you're close to some edges there, and you've got a body line working with you for yeah. you. So there's some rigidity to the to the body line. Yeah, that you might be able to restore a little bit. Like, like and continue, then also continue the to edges. push, push. You're talking like continue to restore. Yeah, maybe. I mean, I'd like to look at the nice. the body line like exactly like how you're doing it right there. Like, and even if you can eyeball it like in person to see if there's any waver in there because that little waver in there could be holding some of that in. Uh, but also, again, going back to the edges, you know, what's nice about edges is that they, you know, if you can find where they're trapping the pressure, you can relieve some of that. And and like what we we're talking about, removing the bumper cover, you know, you get one of those doll, uh, dent dollies or a block and you take a, a heavy dead blow or a sledgehammer even, yeah. and just you shock the, the heck out of that metal and you can, at the very least, well, you might be releasing the pressure there, but at the very least, you can kind of see what it's doing. You can kind of get a feel and for that's like, a when good you push idea. That. That's a good idea, Joe. I didn't think of, you know what? I have a dolly and I can just tap on a little bit with one of my hammers right there, my rubber hammers. And I can just do that, heat it up. That's a good idea. I'm going to try that. That's, that's actually a real good suggestion on there. Okay. All right. Yeah. And like, if you push in that oil can right and then you try striking it on that edge you're going to see that oil can pop back out right mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. you might that might give you some uh now are you talking just, the edge like least you some said, reference. are you saying put the, the dolly like like right across the body line like you're talking about that or down below where, where, where down are you below referring? okay down, down below, below remove the bumper remove the bumper cover okay okay 
underneath that uh, you would only be able to access if you remove the bumper cover. Does yeah. that make sense? Like where, yeah. where the bottom of the, of the quarter panel goes down into a 90? Yeah. And you might want to heat up the paint too, you know, so, so you don't crack anything. But, you know, you're not really uh, – you're not getting too aggressive with it, but you're just striking it and and letting it put some shock waves into that metal. You it might be holding in, and particularly where you see in the before, you can see where that dent does go into that edge there, Mike. Yeah, it does. You, you, you can see the your, yeah, you can see the reflection like it, it bows right into it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, your LEDs bend right there, so that might be the the point where it's holding in. Yeah, good suggestions. Maybe. Good suggestions. Like this is why we have this. This is why we, John. I mean, John, <laughs> Joe, and I take. We do these deep, deep, uh, deep dives. Yeah, it is. Why you know? What? I didn't realize it. Look, I, I panned right there. Let's do that again. I want to play that again. So, um, yeah, you're right. You're right, Joe. Yeah, it bows way out. So I did release some of the stress. I didn't realize it was that pinched in there so i bet you if i take that bumper cover off there may be some fractures of paint uh, underneath yeah. that yeah yeah i think you might be right you're gonna get in there tomorrow and with a cup of coffee <laughs> and you're gonna just figure it out i'm gonna rewatch this <laughs> all right joe said <laughs> joe said joe said this all right well we're, we're doing remote control dent guy yeah, Joe, thanks for the suggestions, man. Like, uh, it's so listen, guys, if you guys find value in this, uh, in these podcasts, you like what Joe says, uh, let us know, you know, give, give, give show us some love, uh, give us a review, um, tell what, you know, say what Joe, you don't have to say what I say, you know, who cares, but Joe takes the time and, and come on this podcast. And, uh, I want, I want to say publicly, thanks a lot, Joe, for coming on, man. I really do appreciate you taking your time and, uh, and putting it into here, but but that yeah, thanks. Let, let us know and and write a review if you get a chance, okay? And, or if you're watching on YouTube, let us know what you think here too. So, Joe, let's talk about uh, let's talk about the newest tool that you ordered. All right. Yes. Where did you see that tool at? Okay, because I, I well, of course, I'm not on Facebook as much as I used to be, but where did you see it? I'm sure. Well, nobody sends me free stuff, so I got to buy it. I still got to buy all my tools, Mike. I'll, I'll, but, I'll, try, I'll try to get you hooked up, dude. <laughs> all right? I'll try to get you hooked up. I'm just messing. Um, yeah, I saw in, uh, gosh, I think it was Instagram where uh, Cam Auto was, Forgive me, I don't I don't know the gentleman's name from Cam Auto, but Aru, was, Aru, uh, Arun or Arone. Uh, I, I, okay, it's hard to pronounce his name. I'm, I'm well, he's he's a, a very wise dude, man. I I enjoy watching his videos that he puts up, and it, it's like really out of the box thinking, and um, he's really I think he's starting a, a bit of a rebirth of the body man, dude, because I, I I see a lot of uh, you know old school or conventional body repair guys yeah using the keiko and, and cam auto stuff now and it's really cool to watch man because they're putting their take on it you know we're we come from more of a finesse side of things and they're using more of like the science of of metal release and uh anyway i see this guy this gentleman uh from cam auto uh showing demonstrating the attachment to a slide hammer where basically the gist of it is you don't have to worry now about your tabs going flying across the room or directly under the car where they always seem to land dead center underneath the vehicle you're working on, right? That's right. So let's let's talk about it. Let's show it to them visually, okay? Um, when I first saw it, I was like, well, actually, let me just take this off so you guys can see. I'm going to just go full screen if you don't mind, Joe, and you can still, yeah, go you for still, it. You can still talk. Um, <laughs> So here is the mechanism. So what it does is it attaches to the slide hammer, but watch this, dude. So you pull this and you've got a horseshoe tab uh, uh, attachment. And you just put your tab there, right? And boom. <laughs> and now it ain't coming off. So when you slam your your glue and your tab off it is not going to let go now 
how easy is it to hook up? Well, here's my slide hammer, right? I guess I could have shot a little video of this too as well. But you just actually, you know, it's got a little rubber grommet on the end too, Joe. So it really lo locks in. Can you hear me, nice. Joe? Yeah. Yep, can I can it. hear you. All right. I'm just so, in awe, dude. <laughs> So there you go. I mean, of course, mine's not lined up. Uh, but I'm just giving you guys a, a nice little look on how it how it works. Okay. I'm yes, and, and somehow he demonstrated how it can lock into the uh, the centipede tabs too. You know where the the head of it is really long, and, and that thing will will lock into one of those as well. Yeah. Yeah. So. I mean, it's good. It's it's really good, I mean, and and it doesn't matter if you have a pass through or not, because what it does is it it'll just lock down uh, between the the forks, you know, or the prongs of your, of your slide hammer attachment. But this is really cool, and you know, you just pull it, and it locks in. So this is from Cam Auto. Uh, I'll put the link down below. What'd you buy it for? Brilliant. How much was it? Uh, I I want to say it was like a hundred bucks. So, was it? which, yeah, but, you know, considering all the chasing down tabs that fell out of my slide hammer, uh, I don't have to do that anymore. It, it ain't, it don't feel cheap. It doesn't feel cheap. I'll tell you that you guys, it's, it's got some weight to it. It's actually going to, I think, help your, your, your snaps too, as well. Uh, when you pull, how much think play so? does it have? I don't know. It's a good idea. Actually good. Barely any. Okay. So, yeah. But this so part's cool. It, this tight, thing it obviously spins. tightens up when you pull back, right? Like like how you would. Oh yeah, like you kind yeah. Of engage it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's it's gonna do that. Um, yeah. And then this right here, I mean, this is just makes it easy to spin. Like he's got knurls on it on each one, so it's gonna be, it's you're not gonna slip and. Um, nice. It's really cool. It's got a nice spring to it. Horseshoe adapter already built into it, and beautiful. You're good to go. So, oh man, I love it. Enjoy it, Joe. It's just Shoot. Out, outside of the box thinking, man. Well, by the that's way, what's too, cool right got, now, man. I'm using, like, you, ever had this, you ever tried this slide hammer? You tried it at the uh, shop? I think I did, yes. It's got a you nice like weight it? to it, man. And it's, uh, it's magnetic. And it's from yeah. Fast PDR. I just wish. No sharp edges. No. I just wish. I, I think every PDR company should just make a horseshoe. Like. You just forget it because it, it, the tabs hang over a little bit sometimes, you know. But you, you manufacture, well, you know, if you come out with a slide hammer or at least have an adapter or a, one that slides around, so you know, yeah, but I'm sure it's a matter of preference, you know. Yeah, I bet some guys really like the pass through. Yeah, I, I use nothing but the pass through, it's just way easier. Yeah. And you know, here's the thing too when you have a pass through, is like I would just put my finger right across, you know, and just and just snap it like this. Sometimes, okay. depending on what, how hard you're snapping, that can bite you in the butt because you can get that, that, what do you call that, stinger, you know? Yeah. But I think this yeah. is going to take care of that. So you'll never, like yeah. you said, never have to worry about your tabs flying off and losing. I say, yeah. I tell my students, I say, hey, listen. Don't leave your tabs on the ground. I go, that's $3. So would you drop $3 and not pick it up? They're like, oh, no, I'd, I'd pick it up. I said, well, pick up. You make sure your tabs don't fall on the ground. At least if you do, yeah. pick them up. But True. you don't have that problem now. So You know, man, at one point I was thinking, like, I remember doing, like, the bottom of a, a Ford Raptor, the bottom of the door, how it kind of comes in at a 90 degree underneath, and it was dented. And, I was trying to slide hammer that thing out and, and I got it eventually, but my tabs kept flying, you know, across the shop that I was working in. And I even at one point thought if I had a piece of string, I could hot glue the string Freaking to the Joe, side you're of so the, funny, the truck and tie it to the tab. <laughs> so the tab would just hang, you know. Little but now pop, I don't have to do little, that. What do, you, what do you call those little poppers, dude? Like, you know. Yeah, them. exactly. <laughs> I could have, I was getting ready to market uh, PDR mm -hmm. string. <laughs> Yeah, there you go. Evo. Yeah, I, I bet you would, dude. I bet you would. Well, no, I, I it, so. every, everybody, uh, we just want to say thanks a lot. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, let us know what your thoughts are on this podcast. Joe, 
I want to let you go, man. We, you know, I gotta, I gotta go take the wifey out, and we'll see what happens. You know, so. <laughs> All right, man. En- enjoy, dude. Enjoy. You guys uh, have a great evening, and and thanks again for having me on, Mike. You got it, Joe. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up, subscribe if you're watching this on YouTube. But other than that, we'll see you guys on the next one. Take care.